Hey folks, welcome back to the Jeff Fuel Only channel. You've seen wireless CarPlay adapters. You know, those devices that take your wired CarPlay connection in your car and turn it into wireless. Well, today we're gonna to be reviewing a product that does that plus so much more, including streaming your favorite video apps right on your infotainment screen. I'm gonna tell you all about it. Keep watching. Hi folks, I'm Daniel. Welcome to the Jet Fuel Only channel. On this channel, we do all sorts of car stuff, especially Cadillac and Porsche related, but also universal car stuff like reviewing car products. And over a year and a half ago, I did a review on wireless CarPlay adapters. They had just come out. They seemed really cool, but they had all sorts of glitches. I have to tell you though, since that video, software updates have been working perfectly in my 2016 Cadillac and my 2021 Porsche. I use them every day. Today, we're reviewing the Joy Auto MMB11 AI box. It does exactly what those other CarPlay adapters do, but more. That's because it's essentially an Android computer in that little box, but without a screen. It uses your car's infotainment screen as its screen. So that means you can do everything an Android tablet could do. You can download video streaming apps like Netflix and Amazon Prime and HBO Max. You can download games and other useful apps and show them right there on your screen. Not only that, this has Android Auto as well, which a lot of those wireless CarPlay adapters do not have because some of you don't have iPhones like I have. Joy Auto did provide me with this demo unit, but they're not paying me to make this video. In fact, I started a review on the first and second generations of this product, and you never saw a video. Why? Because they just didn't meet my standards. They just had too many issues. But I gotta tell you, as soon as I plugged this one in, it was a totally different experience. They are on the right track. They revamped the software, it runs smooth, it does a lot more. Not saying it doesn't have its own issues. It does, and I'm gonna cover those, but there were no deal breakers for me and probably no deal breakers for you. However, I can't guarantee this is gonna work on every car out there. I've only been able to test it on two cars. So what do you say? We take this down to the car, we'll install it, and I'll show you all of its features, all the goods, and all the bads. Let's get started. All right. So today I'm demonstrating the MMB box on uh, my 2021 Porsche Cayman. It's got PCM 4.0. That's just Porsche's, you know, software version for their infotainment system. Uh, and it works here. But I do want to mention, because I've got a lot of Cadillac followers on this channel, I've tested it in my 2016 Cadillac with Q2.5. And it seems that the processor can't quite keep up with the functions on there. Basically, it gives the same symptoms that a lot of the older dongles did. Uh, that was where the audio would get kind of scratchy after four or five minutes. Asking me to do a melody or invent anything. Uh, just hit your pen. It doesn't do it in the Porsche, but it does it there. Now, that same problem was later fixed in software updates with other dongles, so I can see it being fixed eventually. And I'll let you know down in the comment section uh, if I ever see that you know working properly again. And with that in mind, maybe this is better in newer cars with Apple CarPlay. Uh, I would say for Cadillacs, at least a 2017 running that Q3.0. But it works great in here, so let's get started. You just need to plug in the MMB box into the outlet that's good for CarPlay, and it's gonna boot up. The first time you power up, it takes a little longer to boot up, but if you're just going into the grocery store and coming back, it boots up a little quicker. So you're seeing the full boot up sequence here. There can be sound, but there's an option to turn off the sound for the startup because, well, I just found it a little annoying myself. All right, there's 100% and there's our startup screen. This is the Android interface and it looks a lot like Apple CarPlay and that's good for consistency. Uh, and this is the new interface that I like so much better. So what I always recommend is you wanna disconnect your phone's Bluetooth and maybe even delete that profile out of your infotainment system and then delete your car's Bluetooth profile off your phone. You can add it later, uh, but sometimes it, you run into issues trying to get this thing going for the first time. So quickly, let me just show you how to get CarPlay working. We'll go to the settings app, which is pretty obvious with the gear icon, and then go to Bluetooth, connect new device. And then it says to look for Venus 1306 on your phone's Bluetooth settings. So I'll go to that and there it is at the bottom and I'll select it. And you know, pairing request, confirm the numbers, etc. 
uh, allow contacts to sync. Uh, I'm not gonna do that on this phone, but that's okay. And uh, now it says Bluetooth is connected to Daniel's phone. And you have all the options of, you know, ac accessing your contacts if you sync that up and your music and making calls right from the Android interface. So that's cool. You don't even need wireless Apple CarPlay going to do that. So now I can go back to the home screen and there's this icon for wireless CarPlay and I'll hit that. And there we have it, CarPlay. It's just like any other CarPlay. It works fine, works smoothly, no lag. You can see all your CarPlay useful apps there. I don't need to review CarPlay for you guys, I don't think, uh, but it's wireless and it works great in this. Now, if you wanna go back, you'll go to the car icon. Mine happens to say Porsche. Uh, it may or may not say the actual car model you drive. I've seen that in the older models. Uh, so let's go back to Porsche and that actually goes back to the MMB's interface. And that's the cool stuff I wanna show you because we already know about wireless and uh, wired Apple CarPlay. But let me just show you everything that this thing's gonna do. You got a home screen, which could be showing Google Maps up there, uh, easy access to wireless CarPlay and some recently used icons. And then you can hit here and see all your icons. Uh, there's a media folder because you can actually store media on here. It has 32 gigabytes of storage, so you can store movies to watch on the road if you want, or plug in a USB that has movies and stuff on it and it'll play them just fine. Uh, most formats acceptable. Uh, there's the CarPlay icon, Android Auto if you have an Android phone. Uh, the clean up app which is really nice because if you run a lot of apps you know it starts using up a lot of memory so that'll clear out all the uh, memory to get things running smoother but I haven't really seen any need to do that quite yet you can jump to Bluetooth music uh, this is uh, says the car it's in CarPlay mode and Bluetooth cannot be used okay and that's fine you could just you know do your Bluetooth just like your most cars do anyway uh, already but uh, I still find it easier just to use the CarPlay function. You can see all your apps here. There's lots of apps, but as you know, tons of apps these days require an internet connection. And this box does not have a cellular connection on its own. So you need to get data if you're gonna watch streaming videos and things like that, you gotta get data, right? So how are you gonna do that? Well, a lot of cars these days have a built-in Wi-Fi hotspot that you can add to your data plan, whether it's OnStar with uh, Chevy and GM or Porsche's communication thing, or you can just run it through your network like AT&T. It's like 20 bucks extra a month for me if I wanted to do it. Unfortunately, this car wasn't equipped with a SIM card slot, uh, so I can't do that here. And the Cadillac, I don't pay a subscription on it. But that's one way of getting data is having it automatically connect to your car's hotspot. The other, of course, is using your phone as a hotspot. Now, not everybody has that as part of their service or their carrier or their phone model, but most phone models can do it. So I can just go to uh, my personal hotspot. I'll turn that on and we can go to the settings app in the MMB, choose Wi-Fi, turn it on. And just so you know, CarPlay requires a Wi-Fi connection between the phone and the box. So if you switch over to using streaming apps, you have to disconnect CarPlay. That's just how it is. You can't get around that. So here's Daniel's phone. I could just connect there, but I actually have poor signal here. And so we are in my garage. I'm just going to use the Wi-Fi from the house. So that's already connected. And then you can access a lot of stuff. For example, if you want to do phone mirroring, that's right. You can show whatever's on your phone screen right here on the infotainment screen. So we'll pick Android or iOS, iOS of course, and it says make sure you're on the same LAN, open iPhone control center mirroring and select the device name. All right, so let me show you that. The box is connected to my home Wi-Fi. My phone is on home Wi-Fi. I'll swipe down from the top right corner and select the mirroring icon and then look for Venus 1306. It takes a couple seconds to connect and now on our screen is whatever's showing on my phone. And if you want, this is a great way to show off some pictures or videos. Uh, who doesn't like a good cat video? Here we go, my cat playing with a string. All right, uh, there you can, you can of course show pictures there and uh, put it in landscape mode. You might get it a little bigger, but you can zoom it in. The only thing I don't like is these black boxes, but that's just with the iPhone Photos app. I've seen other things like we could pick YouTube if you didn't want to use YouTube that's on the box and uh, play a video. Here's YouTube showing. Still a few boxes on the side, but that's just how it is. Uh, I can zoom in a little bit and get rid of them. So that works out, but it's just some aspect ratio issues here. So that's phone screen mirroring. We can cancel by just pressing the same buttons we did before and stop mirroring. Back to our home screen here. What else can we do? We can cast anytime you have that little icon to cast a video or something. 
But again, that's no big deal because if you have a hotspot, you can just connect and this thing has those apps already. And then here we've got YouTube and Netflix. These are preloaded on here. VLC, which is a media player. It plays all types of media. So if you have any videos stored on there or with a USB plugged in, you can play your videos there. But let's check out the Netflix app. Of course, one of the tedious things is you've got to log into Netflix, so you'd have to do that right here on the screen with the pop-up keyboard. Uh, but I've already done that, and so we'll log in here on, under my name. And there's Netflix, just as you would expect. This all works just fine, except for one little thing, and, and that is that if you want to watch a TV show, uh, like we'll just pick this one here, it's not letting me scroll down to see all the episodes. Uh, there's usually more episodes here. Let me push this and see. And then it tries to play that automatically played video that Netflix does. So here's what I do to get to other episodes. So let's just start playing one episode. And if that's not the one you want to watch, I'm going to hit the episodes button down here at the bottom of the screen. Now I can see all these episodes available for this show. Hit play and they just play. You even have some brightness control here, which is kind of nice. Uh, and all the options like speed, audio, subtitles, etc. By the way, to get out of anything, there's this hidden button here. You touch the screen and it comes up and you push that. There's a back button, a split screen button, and a Google Assistant button. So it, we'll go back, back one more time. There we go, back to the home screen. YouTube works the same way. Let's see what other cool apps we've got going on here. I put in HBO Max. I downloaded it to see if it would work. It does. Uh, I even downloaded a couple of car apps like the Torque app, which if you have a OBD reader that has Bluetooth, I think that we may be able to connect, but I wasn't able to do it because my OBD reader actually failed. But if for you car people, this may be a great way to see all those gauges that you like to use with those types of apps, like showing your air fuel ratio um, and uh, various other parameters or even check codes. And they would be right here on the screen if it works. So uh, if you've tried that, be sure to comment below and let us know what car apps you've used. There's also like uh, the Track Addict app, which is an app I use to do overlays of data while I'm driving the car on the track. I bet that could work here too. It didn't work with the previous gen because it wasn't available on the Google Play Store, basically saying it's not compatible. But on the Google Play Store, I did see some of those apps available. So if you want a new app, you just go to the Google Play Store, you search for it, you pick your app and you download it. I tried Xfinity and that works. Uh, there's also Google Maps, right? Uh, and that sounds pretty cool, but I, I find it's not that great. It's cooler because it has more functionality, more like the Google Maps you find on a desktop software. But I did find that it was a little on the slow side. Uh, it works okay. But in the end, I just like the format that CarPlay puts up for me or Android Auto. It's just easier to use in the car. This is a little small to touch everything because, uh, you know, it's again, it's meant for a bigger screen. So it's available if you need it, but again, you need that Wi-Fi connection to have that working. So what about that split screen function? Uh, so if I want, I'll just get that pop-up button here, hit the split screen button, and now I can uh, choose which apps, I can switch apps, but I can also just choose to split screen and then choose my other app, like maybe uh, the Google Play Store. And now I've got a split screen. With that in mind, you can also have the little picture in a picture. So if you're watching uh, YouTube, for example, and you want to go back to this home screen, uh, there'll still be a little YouTube video player down at the bottom that you can always maximize back to full screen. So again, great functionality, just like your Android phone or tablet would have. Now I want to talk about GPS. For example, if you're using GPS uh, for Google Maps and such, the settings here has an option under the general settings that uh, you can choose the vehicle's GPS if your vehicle has one, the internal GPS, which is built into the unit itself, or an external one if you want to hook that up. Uh, the internal one I noticed isn't getting uh, any signal, at least not in my garage, but it doesn't help that it's down in my console under my roof, while the vehicle's GPS antenna is uh, has an open view to the sky right at the windshield and that one seems to work best and you can use the gps app to determine how your signal is here and so i get a very clear fix with the car's gps antenna now there is the google assistant button and it doesn't seem to work with the voice control i'm not sure why here but if i type in something it definitely works like it's supposed to 
Directions to Starbucks. It's as if it's not even hearing me. Hopefully it works better with an update, but honestly, I use uh, the Siri function on Apple CarPlay, so it doesn't really matter. If you wanna go back to the car's normal nav screen, you just hit the car button here, and there it took me back to the Porsche default screen. I'll go back to CarPlay, and it's all right there. It comes up immediately. Now, in the settings, there are a couple of adjustments you can make. For example, you can choose if the GPS is using the vehicle. Driving safety, it's a, a warning for you. Uh, there's a boot sound I told you about that I don't really care for. And then there's the startup option. You can tell it, like, do you want to start up with uh, the Android MMB screen like we've been using, or do you want it to automatically start in CarPlay mode? I wanted it to start in CarPlay mode, but apparently that feature hasn't been worked out yet. So they have plans for it, but maybe in a future upgrade. So that does kind of stink. So instead, when the car starts, I get uh, this screen here, and I still have to whack the CarPlay button, and then it connects. That, again, is not a deal breaker to me. It's an inconvenience, but uh, I think they're going to fix it soon. Other settings, uh, you know, clock, 24-hour uh, format, touch cursor sensitivity, and how big third-party apps display. That's about it. Uh, otherwise, this thing runs pretty smooth. Uh, this is way better than it was before. The only thing I notice is that uh, when I swipe, I can't just kind of swipe as, you know, lazily like I can on an iPhone. I really got to carry it all the way over for it to make it to that next page. So that's that's all. You know, maybe they could improve that, but it's not a big deal. Otherwise, it, it works pretty good. Again, not a deal breaker. Obviously, I'm an iPhone user, so I don't have an Android phone. But I did happen to catch a friend with a later model Samsung phone, and we tested it out in the Cadillac. We were able to get Android Auto running, but we didn't have enough time to really mess with it and make sure that everything worked consistently over a long period of time. So if you have an Android phone and you've used this device, comment below and let us know your experience. Now, one of the benefits that this device has over the previous gens and other things is this has an HDMI port. What are you going to do with that? Well. If you have, say, like a Cadillac Escalade, in the back seats, there's usually an HDMI input. So you can hook up your PlayStation or something. Well, how about this? You connect this with your HDMI port to the back seat there, and your kids now have the ability to watch Netflix and YouTube and stuff right there on the screens that are on the back of the seats. Doesn't that sound great? I mean, you can use the car's you know, Wi-Fi hotspot connection to do that or, or hotspot off your phone, but then kids will be entertained. You can even add games. And yes, you could possibly add a controller. In fact, this has an option when you buy, you can get a wireless controller. It's like a remote on one side and on the other side, a keyboard and it works great. In fact, you can take this device and plug it into your TV with HDMI and it works. With my LG TV, I was able to use the LG remote or the remote that you can buy with it, but it works great. And you can show this stuff right on your TV. Now these are a little more expensive than just a basic wireless dongle for CarPlay, but remember you're getting so much more functionality. Right now, Joy Auto has these for about uh, 290 and then maybe add another 20 bucks for that remote. Now, if you look in the description, you'll probably find a link that has a special discounted price for jet fuel only subscribers. So definitely check that out. But maybe this device isn't for you. Maybe you don't need all that functionality. Joy Auto actually has just a regular wireless CarPlay dongle and a plus that a lot of others don't have is that cheaper dongle still has the phone mirroring function. That's a really cool function that most CarPlay adapters don't have. So check that out. All right, so that's the MMB11 AI box from Joy Auto. What do you think? Is this something for you? I think for as if I was a passenger, I would love to have a movie playing here. But remember guys, you're driving, you're not supposed to be watching that and it's really easy to be distracted. So I'm not advocating that at all. Got it? Okay. All right, folks, that's it for this review. Be sure to hit that like button. It really helps this channel grow. That like button is more important than the subscribe button these days, I think. But I do love your subscription and hit the bell if you wanna be updated of other car content that you find on this channel. We got some good stuff, maybe some other cool product reviews in the future. All right, thanks so much for watching the Jeff Fuel Only channel. We'll see you next time.